In this video, we are going to take a look at the Privateer Trawler 50, a twin engine steel hull liveaboard explorer yacht that, when uploading this video, is currently listed for sale with the Volk Yacht Brokers. As well as the full yacht tour, we will be heading out on a mini sea trial and I'll be showing you some of my favourite features aboard this ideal owner operator boat that is ready to start roaming the world with a new owner. Before we get started, don't forget to give the video a like and if you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Over on the starboard side of the swim platform, you'll find a passerelle by Bisenzoni. This helps with easy boarding, especially when the boat is moored stern to. There's also a boarding gate located amidship for extra convenience. Safety hasn't been overlooked with a sturdy stainless steel rail running around the whole cockpit area to keep everyone secure. Here in the cockpit, we have a color coordinated teak imitation deck shaded by the flybridge's overhang. There are two capstans on the stern, one on the port side and one on the starboard side. Note also the hatch on the deck of the cockpit that provides easy access to the engine bay. As the sun dips below the horizon, the soft glow of the recessed LED lights beneath the flybridge overhang transforms the deck into a peaceful and inviting space. The saloon has a great layout with a retractable TV and storage space on the starboard side and a U-shaped seating area over on the port side. The galley is located forward. From a personal perspective, this layout appeals to me since it allows the person preparing food in the galley to stay engaged in conversations with guests who are relaxing in the saloon. But what do you think? Let me know in the comments below. The galley features a stainless steel sink an electric candy sprinter cooker and a candy microwave oven combo. A Leibheer fridge keeps your meals and drinks chilled, while a candy dishwasher handles the cleanup operation after you've enjoyed your meal. This window can also be opened for extra ventilation. When you're in the saloon, you can immerse yourself in panoramic vistas, courtesy of the expansive saloon windows, adding an open air feel to the interiors. The generous two meter headroom amplifies the space and assures a comfortable stay on board. If you need to close the windows whilst you're underway, then you can see how the ventilation ducts make sure that the space is still well ventilated even when everything is closed. Don't forget later on in the video, we will be heading out on a mini sea trial and I'll be showing you some of my favorite areas on board this steel trawler yacht. So make sure that you stay tuned and don't forget to give the video a like. As we make our way forward along the port companionway, we ascend several steps and find ourselves in the modern and well-equipped pilot's house. Constructed in the Netherlands back in 2017, this trawler yacht is a testament to the craftsmanship of privateer yachts, brought to life through the innovative designs of Venetian naval architecture. On the helm, we have a suite of modern Simrad technology including an electric compass and a multi-control display. The depth sounder and log keep track of your voyage beneath the waves, while a Simrad VHF radio complete with a handheld option keeps you connected with the wider world. Autopilot and a GPS plotter system make for smooth sailing and easy location tracking. The additional presence of a radar and AIS transceiver ensures you'll always be aware of other vessels. And the cherry on top, a couple of strategically placed cameras, one forward and one aft, for complete visibility. As you can see, the position of the pilot's house ensures that the operator of the vessel gets excellent 180 degree views of what is happening around the boat. There is a good threshold on the pilot's house doors, a very important feature for CE Category A vessels like the Privateer Trawler 50. On the port side of the pilot's house is a staircase that leads up to the flybridge, which we'll check out in a minute. I really like the comfortable and sizeable L-shaped seating area located after the helm position. Note the vent recessed into the back of the helm display that makes sure everything stays cool when operating in warmer climates. 
And now let us head down into the accommodation areas, which can be accessed via a staircase on the port side of the pilot house. This privateer has a total of three cabins and offers six berths, two doubles and one twin single. Let us start by taking a look inside the double guest cabin. Here, guests can rest in a generous double bed, measuring two meters in length. This cabin also boasts ample storage with a hanging wardrobe and shelves, ensuring that all of your guests' essential items are at arm's reach. Lots of natural light filters in through these sizable portholes, which will help ensure that any guests who are perhaps not used to sleeping on a boat still feel comfortable. The double guest cabin shares a well-appointed bathroom, featuring an electric planus toilet system, a modern wash basin and a good sized shower. Again, the vertical porthole ensures that lots of natural light also fills this space. The boat holds 1000 litres of fresh water, ensuring comfort for longer journeys. In terms of waste, the vessel's black water capacity is 350 litres. To keep an eye on these levels, there's a handy control panel from Simrad, allowing for real-time monitoring. This makes water management on board convenient and, best of all, straightforward. Crafted from rich ash, the cabinetry in this guest cabin adds an element of warmth and elegance. On the climate front, room temperature can be easily controlled with the Webasto Blue Cool V50M system, ensuring comfort no matter the weather outside. And now we finish finished having a look around the double guest cabin, let's head to the twin single cabin. My subscribers probably already know I've been waiting a long time to get on one of these privateer trawlers. Each of the two single beds in this cabin offers a comfortable resting place. The cabin is also actually very bright and airy thanks to several portholes and a skylight. Let me know in the comments what you think of these interior spaces. Again, this cabin has individual climate control thanks to the Webasto Blue Call. The Blue Call system is designed for reverse cycle operation, providing both cooling and heating as needed. It works by utilising seawater to dissipate heat, a highly efficient process that also saves energy. An added advantage is that the system is compact and quiet. I also like the fact that each berth in this cabin has its own reading light as well, a very nice touch. As we step into the bathroom for the twin single guest cabin, the first thing that sticks out to me is the efficient use of space. An electric planus toilet system sits alongside a practical sink unit with a separate shower area. All fixtures appear easy to clean and maintain, adding to the practicality of this space. A level indicator integrated into the Simrad control panel allows easy monitoring of the 350 litre Blackwater tank, adding to the suite of practical features on board. Illuminated by natural lights from the porthole, this guest bathroom marries function and comfort seamlessly. And now let's head to the master cabin. Stepping into this forward master cabin, we find a generously sized double bed that measures two meters in length. I like the subtle use of indirect lighting in here. It's incredibly cozy. As well as a mirror on the forward bulkhead that adds to a sense of depth, there's also private reading lights and plenty of space for books and hanging lockers for your clothes and other essential items. This cabin also has portholes which can be closed off thanks to the custom curtains. There's also a good sized skylight in this cabin as well. One of the features I like in this master cabin is the fact that you can get access to the bed both on the port and the starboard side thanks to these small companionways. Another feature that is prominent throughout the boat is the amount of headroom. Here we see the benefits of having that raised area on the foredeck. From the vantage point of the double bed looking aft, you get a really good sense of the size of the space in here. Before I show you the engine compartment and we head out on our sea trial, as well as sharing some of my favorite features on board, let's head up onto the flybridge. It's always good to see some sea safety equipment dotted around the pilot's house, if you need one of these, then be sure to check out my Amazon store. You'll find a link in the video description. Before we head up onto the large flybridge, it's probably worth having another quick look around this pilot's house. As many of my subscribers already know, the pilot's house on board 
any vessel is always one of my favourite places to be. But that's enough self-indulgence for now, let's head up onto the flybridge. As we head up here, the first thing you'll probably notice is the fact that the radar mast is leant backwards. And that's because you can lower the air draft of the vessel thanks to this retractable radar mast that can be lowered with the touch of a button. It's good to see the guardrail that goes all around the flybridge, something essential for when you've got little people on board. There's ample seating up here and over on the port side we have the E1000 deck crane. Also up here on the port and starboard side we've got life rafts as well as a life buoy and man overboard position indicator. As someone who proudly volunteered in the RNLI, I cannot tell you enough how important it is to make sure that you have life rafts and that they're serviced often and that you have life rings on board your boat. As we pass by the starboard L-shaped seating area with table, we'll head over to the well-equipped helm position. For viewers who may not be aware, you can operate this boat solely from this position on board the flybridge. On the left we have the rudder angle control stick and moving over to the right of the helm station are the throttle controls for the twin John Deere engines as well as repeated controls for the bow and stern thrusters. As mentioned earlier in the video this boat is perfectly set up for an owner operator. And finally up on the flybridge I just want to show you this really nicely crafted helm chair. Before I show you the engine room and before we go out on our mini sea trial, let's have a walk around the upper deck. The port and starboard side decks on the Privateer 50 are actually really wide considering this is a 50 foot boat. I really like the exposed gunnels on the vessel as well, I think it really harps back to her commercial styling. Here we get an external view of the starboard entrance to the pilot house. As we move forward, let's take a moment to take in this visual spectacle of the forward raking windows. Again, it's a feature that I think is a must on any trawler yacht. Here we also get a great view of the raised area on the foredeck that allows the additional headroom in the forward master cabin. Here we have a robust anchor and a 75 meter chain managed by an electric windlass. Thanks to the hatch, you can also get quick access to the chain locker. Now let's head back towards the cockpit using the port side deck. One of the things that I notice as I walk down here is the amount of engineering that's gone in to the side access gate. Talk about heavy duty, especially on a boat of this size. But on a steel category A vessel like this one, it's the sort of engineering that you would hope for and of course expect. Note also the grab rails atop the gunnels, again another very important safety feature for a boat like this. And now it's time to check out what powers this boat through the water. Stepping into the engine room we're greeted by a pair of John Deere 4045 AFM85 M1 engines, each delivering 160 horsepower. This setup offers a comfortable cruising speed of 7 knots and a maximum speed of 9 knots. The engines are cooled by an efficient freshwater heat exchanger and connect to the propellers through a sturdy duplex steel shaft. This trawler yacht is fitted with an electric side power, bow and stern thruster for precision manoeuvring and an 11 kilowatt Cummins Onan generator is on board to supply the power. And to ensure smooth sailing, a Seakeeper Gyro 9 stabiliser system has also been fitted. Truly a setup designed for reliability and of course performance. Carrying 5,330 litres of fuel divided across four bulk and two day tanks, this Privateer 50 trawler yacht is built for medium distance journeys. Thanks to the fuel savvy John Deere engines, when cruising at a comfortable speed of 7 knots, the boat has an estimated range of around 1,500 nautical miles, 
When the need arises to travel at a top speed of 9 knots, the range obviously decreases but remains good, allowing ample cruising distances between refuelling stops. The Lazarette houses the boat's comprehensive hydraulic system. It also contains the Victron Quattro inverter charger that works in tandem with the robust battery bank to provide power. In here you'll also find the Dometic Sea Exchanger water maker and the Webasto Blue Cool system. Personally I think this is a fairly sizeable Lazarette for a boat of this size but what do you think? Let me know in the comments below. And remember any comments, questions or queries which are left with a super thanks, always guaranteed a response. And now it's time to show you some of the footage from the mini sea trial we went on. And don't forget after this I'll be back on board again to share with you some of my favourite features on this trawler yacht. During our mini sea trial there were a total of three people on board. The wind was moderate but thanks to the protected area of water we were on there was no sea state to speak of. As you can see even with the three of us in the pilot's house there was plenty of room to move around and we did not get in each other's way and the skipper's view of what was going on around us was not hindered by our presence. As mentioned in the tour part of the video there is excellent visibility around the forward sector of the wheelhouse with 180 degree views from the port midships point all the way around to the starboard midships tracking both left to right and vice versa. All of the helm controls are within easy reach of the helm position so if you are navigating in tight spaces you don't have to take your eyes off the horizon as you are looking for for example the throttle controls or the bow and stern thrusters. Here are some running shots of us underway as we motored along at just under 9 knots. Despite a negligible sea state the wind was quite strong but of course thanks to the gunnels and the large handrail atop the gunnels moving around on the upper deck felt very safe. In fact I would be more than happy to have my 6 and 3 year old children on board without worrying too much about them wandering over the side. Not that I would let them out on the upper deck on their own obviously. As you heard during the yacht tour part of the video the radar mast can be lowered with the touch of a button via the multi-function displays. It takes just a matter of seconds to retract the mast and reduces the vessel's air draft from 7.65 meters to just 3.4 meters and you only need one person to operate this feature. I would like to hear from you my subscribers in relation to what you want me to cover in these sea trials so feel free to share your thoughts in the comments below. Like I said at the beginning of the video when uploading this footage in May 2023 this boat was listed for sale with the Volk Yacht Brokers for 1.175 million euros with VAT paid. If you would like to contact the broker I will leave a link with their contact details in the video description. Remember if you have access to a boat that you would like me to feature on my YouTube channel feel free to drop me an email or connect with me on Instagram. I will leave my contact details in the video description. Coming up next I'm going to share with you some of my favourite features aboard this privateer trawler 50. I'll be sharing a summarised version of my favourite features and I'll upload the full footage on my second channel which I've just started. It's called Boat Boy and you'll find the link for that channel in the video description.
Now that the main video is finished, I just want to show you around this Privateer Trawler 50 on some of my favourite parts of this boat. I've loved Privateer Trawlers for a while now, so it's a real treat to get on board this one. I'd like to say a massive thank you to Devault Yacht Brokers for allowing me access to this boat. Come with me, let's go and have a look and I'll show you some of my favourite areas. I love the huge passerelle, conveniently located on the uh, starboard side. Really thick door on the transom as well. Really good build quality. I love the fact that you've got a separate lazarette from the engine room as well. And obviously you've seen the main engine room uh, on the main tour. Considering how old this boat is, the engine room is immaculate, um, which I think says a lot about the way this boat has been looked after by her current owner. I expected to go in the engine room and find it um, a little bit more well used, should we say, in terms of how it appears. But when you're down there, it's like the boat is hardly used, but it is used and that's the key. The owner has really looked after this boat. I also love the really wide side decks and this bit here as well. Makes you feel like you're on a boat but it's kind of twice the size uh, of this 50 footer. I love the fact you've got the side access gates and just how wide the side decks are. You don't have to pivot or twist or turn as you make your way aft and forward, which I think is a really good thing. Really easy access to the anchor and the deck gear. And of course, those forward raking windows. Always a big fan of the forward raking windows and I think it really gives the trawler yacht a sense of identity. Uh, again, this is just my own personal opinion. I love the fact that you've got three skylights here on the foredeck, the raised area, which allows lots of natural light into the living spaces. Uh, let's just head back aft along the port side. Again, look at the engineering and the build with well, the access gate, really high quality. I mean, this boat is absolutely immaculate as well. Make sure I don't fall down into the lazarette. I really like the living area in here, really because of the situation in terms of where the galley is located. Again, it's the kind of galley I'd expect to find on a bigger boat, really, the layout as well in general. Uh, makes you feel like you're on a bigger boat, that's for sure. Um, I like the L-shaped seating area, opposite the uh, retractable TV there, and those big windows, allowing not, lots of natural light in. Now obviously, this wouldn't be my favorite bits without telling you that of course, the wheelhouse is one of my favorite bits. Um, again, the amount of space up here is really impressive. I love the helm station, uh, the midships position. I do like those small, uh, sporty looking wheels as well. Uh, personally, if this was my boat, I'd probably prefer to have a seat here, just so I could sit and admire the view. But obviously when you're motoring an autopilot, uh, you don't necessarily always need to be sat at the helm position. But yeah, if I sit here on the L-shaped seating, you can imagine them motoring along. Great view thanks to the big windows. Folks, if you'd like to see my full favorite features mini tour of this boat, then head over to my second channel, which I started up a few days ago. It's called Boat Boy, and I'll leave a link for that in the video description. I'd just like to say a massive thank you to my channel members for supporting my YouTube channel. Think of YouTube channel membership as their version of Patreon. If you're interested in finding out more, I'll leave a link in the comments below. Folks, if you've made it this far through the video, then please leave an anchor emoji in the comments, just so I know that you've watched the whole thing. Obviously, don't forget to give the video a like, and if you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. I'll see you on the next one. Until then, fair winds and following seas.